Hello everyone, welcome back to the another tutorial from the beginner series. In this one, we are going to dive into the most used deformers in Cinema 4D when it comes to modeling. The first one is the FFT and the other one is the bent deformer. Once you learn how to use them, you can eliminate the other ones like those ones above the FFT deformer as those two deformers are quite versatile and let you do anything you want when it comes to deformation. So let's start with the FFT deformer but first we need an object and that object is going to be a cylinder. Let's add this one in. I will also go to the Display and enable quick shading lines so that we can see the edges of the mesh. Then I will go to the options of the cylinder and set the height to 100. By the way, let me turn off the work plane so that you can see it a bit better. Now we are ready to add in an FFT deformer. To do that, I will select the mesh first, then hold down Shift and select the FFT deformer. This is going to make the deformer a child of the selected object. Now with the FFT deformer selected, I will go down to the options of it and lower down the segments or grid points. Because what we need is a very simple deformation. We just want to scale down the bottom section of the cylinder. So to do that, I will select FFT. Then I will go into the points mode. Now I will select this four points, then I will select the scale tool and then I will scale those points inwards. As an alternative way, you can hold down shift and add in a taper deformer. Let's turn off the FFT deformer. Taper deformer will do the same thing basically. I will increase up the strength, remove the curvature and then flip the axis of the deformer and then click on fit the parents. You can see that it is doing the same thing. But the thing is that taper deformer is capable of doing a task. But FFT deformer is capable of doing many things. This is why I'm trying to feature the FFT deformer over the taper deformer. Now that we got the base, we can move on to the second detail or second shape. So let's add in another cylinder. I will change the orientation, then go to the front view and change the size of it and change the position of it. It is supposed to be around here. All right, so next thing I am going to do is Go back to the first cylinder that we added in and add in more geometry. The reason being, if you look at the detail we, we want to add in is quite smaller than, than the cylinder we have right now. This is an indication that that base object should have more polygons in it so that we can connect these two objects in a better or smoother way. So let's go to the rotation segments and set this to something like 24. No need to go higher than that, it will be more than enough. I can also use the height segments to my advantage, like I can increase those up until I have quad polygons. Quad polygons or even polygons is another thing that will enable you to manipulate and create better and smoother objects. Now let me select that cylinder and move it down because I will be using that for polygon selection area. So it should fit in. Now I will adjust the new cylinder because you know, to match them. They should have the same amount of polygons. As I said, I will be using that for polygon area, which means that I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points or eight segments for that new cylinder so that I can connect them flawlessly. So let's select this one, go to the rotation segments and set this to eight. The other thing I want to do is increase up the height segments. The reason being we are going to bend to this object, which means that it needs more geometry. It needs more even polygons to do that properly. So let's set this to something like 20 segments, because as I said, we need even and square polygons to get the best effect from the bent deformer. So 20 will be a better choice. Now let's see how we can bend these objects. In Cinema 4D, Bent Deformer works a bit differently. You may be tempted to select the object, hold down Shift and add in a Bent Deformer, just like what we did to the first cylinder. But if you do that, the Bent Deformer will not work the way you want, probably. Let's increase up the strength and as you can see, it's not working the way we want. We can play around with the alignments. But 
but usually doing that doesn't solve the issue. So what I'm going to do is remove the bad deformer. I will just straight up add in a bad deformer. I will increase up the strength so that I can know where it is bending. Knowing that, I will hit Ctrl Z. I will select the rotate tool. I'm going to rotate it that way. Uh, actually, I should increase up the strength so that you can see what I'm doing. So I will rotate it, then hold and shift and stop at 180 degrees. I will do one more rotation adjustment. I will rotate the bend deformer that way, then hold and shift and stop at 90 degrees. Perfect. Now the bend deformer is working the way I want. We just need to make it a child of the object you want to deform. Then we need to click on Auto and click on Fit to Parents. Perfect. In this example, I will set it to something like 80. And then I will select the Scale tool and then scale down the bent deformer. It's going to give us that cool effect. I will select the Move tool and move the bent deformer around here. You should note that these objects are still not editable objects, which means that we have full control over the segments. We can use this to our advantage. For example, we can set the radius to 12 or 13. This is up to you, but let's set this to 12 or 12.5. Now we can start to apply these deformers. To apply these deformers, I will right click on the object and click on connect objects and delete. You should remember that this is a very destructive way. If you make them editable, there is no going back. So I highly recommend duplicating these objects and hide them. I will hold on out, double click on those lights and move the mouse down. This is going to hide them. And also you can right click on these objects and put them into a new layer so that you can go to the layers and hide those objects from the object manager. Let's turn this off. Go back to the attributes. By the way, while we are having those deformers, let me show you why we need more geometry to get the best out of the deformers. For example, if I select that cylinder at the top and reduce the height segments, you can see that the more I lower down the segments, the more I lose the shape I want. And the more I increase up the segments, the better the result is. Obviously, this is too much. We need to find the balance, we need to find the midpoint, so let's set this back to 20. Or we can increase that up to something like 26, because, you know, we want every polygon to be as square as possible, especially around where the bending is happening. Okay, now it is time to apply those deformers. Right click on the object and then click on connect objects and delete. Let's do it one more time, connect objects and delete. Perfect. I will select the base, let's call this base, and I will go into polygon mode. I will select those four polygons. This is where the transition is going to happen. Then I will, sorry, first I will hide the other one. Then while those polygons are selected, I will right click and click on Fit Circle tool. I will add in that circle, I will scale that up a little bit more, then I will go to the options of the tool and enable project the surface. This is going to project those new polygons onto the curvature of the shape. Next up, I will unhide the other one. Let's call this handle. And then I will go into edge mode, select the move tool, double click on that edge loop. Then I will tap V, go to select and select the field selection tool. This is how you can find the selection tools. Tap V, go to select, and then select the field selection tool. What that tool is going to do is select the polygons beyond that edge loop. I will click on and simply delete those polygons. Actually, I will go to the base and delete these polygons as well because I will bridge these loops on each side. So let's do that. But before doing that, we need to connect these objects. We need a single one. So I will select them both, right click and click on connect objects and delete. So to create a connection between these two objects, I will go into edge mode. I will also select the move tool and double click on those loops on each side. Hold my shift, select the loops, then right click, 
select the bridge tool and connect those matching points. Now, what I want to do is do another field selection to cut off the handle. So let's select the move tool. I will double click on that loop. Tab V, select field selection, select those polygons and simply delete them. To close that cap, I will firstly exit the tool. I am still in the field selection, so let's select the move tool. Right click, select the close polygon hole tool, close the hole, and set the polygon type to grid. This is going to give us those nice quads. Now we can move on to that section. I will simply hold down the right mouse and select those polygons. Once I have done that, I will select the scale tool, hold down control, and extrude those polygons in reverse. Now I will select the move tool back, go to the front view, hold down control, and extrude these down over here. Or maybe over here. Then I will tap T and then I will just scale these like so. The next thing I'm going to do is turn those triangles into quads. To do that, firstly, I will select those polygons by holding the right mouse. Then select the scale tool, hold and control, scale them inwards, then delete them. I will right click, select the close polygon hole tool and close the hole. I will this time around set the polygon type to patch, which will allow me to rotate this new geometry around. So let's do something like that, so that the new geometry is aligned with the world. So now let's do the same thing to the other side. I will do the same thing. Select those polygons. Scale them inwards. As an alternative way, you can use the Inset tool. Delete. Close Polygon Hole tool. And rotate the new mesh around until it is aligned with the world. Perfect. Now it is time to put this object into a subdivision surface. So let's do that. I will hold down out while the object is selected and click on the subdivision surface. We can add in some segments. I mean sporting edges. Like I can select the loop cut tool and add in that one around here. And maybe another one over here. I will turn up the subdivision surface. I will hold on shift, add that loop in and increase up the segments so that we have those even and square polygons around. Next step, I will try to get that detail. It is going to be quite easy. I just need to pick up a loop. Then I will tap V, select and select the selection, select that section. Then I will split these out. Right click split. Once I have done that, you can see that the subdivision surface is only affecting the objects below it. So we need to group them. I will select them both, right click and then click on group objects. Now let's turn this off, select this one. I will go into edge mode, select the move tool. These edges are already selected. So I will select the scale tool, hold on control and scale these inwards, which is going to extrude these edges. Now let me do the same thing to the other side. These edges are already selected, so I will hold on control, scale them inwards and enable the subdivision surface. It is going to be that easy. To tighten up the bottom, I just need a single loop. Right click, loop cut tool and add this one in. Now let's take a look at the topology and the flow. As you can see, everything is what? Uh, what is more, everything is square. I am talking about those polygons. Inside the region surface workflow, this might be the most important thing to quads and even polygons. And if you look at where the transition is happening, it is looking quite nice and smooth. Okay, everything is looking perfect, which means that we can check the normals. I will select them both, then go into polygon mode, select the move tool and hit control A. It seems like the normals are correct. 
if you see something like that, uh, just select all the polygons, right click and click on reverse normals. Sometimes you may come across those kind of normals and you can tell by the shading of these polygons. So what you need to do is select everything, right click and click on align normals. I will also select the font tags of the objects and increase up the angle. It is not necessary, but it just changes the way they look in the viewport. And finally, I will scale down the object to something reasonable. Right now, it is huge. If I add in a cube, you can see that the, the cube is around 2 meters. So why don't we set the Y size to 10, then select the null and scale down the top. While doing that, I noticed the gizmo, the axis of the object is off. To fix that, what we can do is, we can select the handle. Actually, this is not a handle anymore, so I will call this base and this one handle. I will select the base, go to the tools and click on center axis to. And then I will select the base, hold down alt and put the object into a new null. Then I will select the handle and put it under the same null. I will move that null up and delete that null. You can see that the axis of this null is way off, but this one is looking better. I will just delete it. Now it is going to be easier to scale that down. I will delete that cube and finally I will select the null, name it cup and open up the coordinates and zero out the X and Y position so that it is at the center of the world. But it didn't work. The reason being we are in the object coordinates. So let's set this to world and do it one more time. I was about to finish the tutorial, but then I realized that these don't match, especially where that spending is happening. So I think it's a good opportunity to show you that you can dissolve an edge loop like that loop so that we have more space to get the same tightness over here. So I will select that loop, right click and dissolve these out. Now I will select the bot, go into points mode, then go to the front view, then select the rectangle selection, then select those points and move those points like so. So this is going to be it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can join the Discord server. There is a dedicated section for the beginners. And in that section, I, I share the files of the tutorials. I share every material in the tutorials. So you are welcome to join the Discord group. You can find the link below. You can also find the other links in the description if you want more content. So this is going to be it for this tutorial. And I will see you in the next ones. Bye.